this would have been quite interesting for, uh, interesting for some students uh, because um, within Vox Humanitatis, which is our uh, non-governmental organization, we care about educational material. Now there is some educational material around, but uh, it's also always on, almost only available in the major languages. So we have one part, uh, which is from the University of Munich, Ludwig Maximilian University, which is about science lessons for primary school, it's all in German. It's under free license, uh, Creative Commons license, uh, attribution share like and only attribution. And they would like to see this work they did for science uh, available for many, many students in the world. This means also for all these uh, students that have to or should study in their mother tongue, which are less resource languages. Now, uh, all the material is in German, and the university said, okay, they don't have, there are no funds for the translation, but what we can do is that students, uh, maybe in the last two classes of their course, could do the translation, and then get a certificate for having translated this part, for example, into English or into French, because having it in English and French, it, is, it gets much easier to have it then translated into African language, in the, into Asian languages. If we can get it in Spanish, we can translate easily in South, Af in South American languages. But having it only in German is a problem. So this one is called Supra. Just to uh, remember the name. Uh, a second project, which is always about education, yeah but on the university level is the specialistic dictionary of the University of Bamberg, uh, where we started, on a, we started the project on the major European languages, but they are also okay of having the same terminology going into less resourced languages. Now, um, many of, much of the terminology is available in German and English. But even French, Spanish, it, it, gets, it gets less and less that you can find them really on the internet. It's about renewable resources, agriculture, uh, well, tourism and gastronomy is a bit better covered, but uh, mainly the, the renewable energies part, which is also very relevant for the uh, European Communion in the end, uh, would be nice. It would be nice to get this into many, many languages as terminology so that translators when they do their job have less problems in finding the correct terminology uh, when they do translations for the companies or, for, or you also have the situation in many small and medium sized companies the secretaries have to do the job that is these companies take just um, a secretary that did a language course, or also from also some people from the university, but not really translators, and they have to do the correspondence in that language. Let's say in French, in Spanish, or whatever language they have to, and of course these don't even know how to retrieve the terminology. Now, if we can help them at least in their communication, because they are not able to do with translations. But very often an email comes in and you have to answer immediately. So you cannot go and search for the translator uh, who then translates the email you want or you have to answer immediately. Uh, so um, you can get them to the uh, terminology that they can at least write the sentences correctly. This was the, sco uh, the initial scope of the project. To have small, medium-sized companies do better job, uh, do better communication work, and to help translators to do better jobs getting these uh, this terminology in there. It's ongoing until next year in October. So uh, this is another way where they said if students want to participate, they they can of course get the the proof, the certificate that they helped by compiling the whole of the glossary.
you know, you have a inserting state, conflating state, and then proofreading. And most of this terminology can be translated one to one <coughs> because it's technical stuff, mainly technical. Uh, another project uh, in the education, educational sector we took up just a short time ago is PALI, which is a um, vocabulary training tool where we started with a basic 1,900 uh, terms, basic terms, and they're already in some 10 to 15 languages now present. And this should go on, you know, uh, we should add further terminology to it so that uh, also, well, the kids can study uh, their less resourced languages. Let's take, well, uh, European language, uh, let's take Neapolitan. It's a language, it's an endangered language because kids, they still speak some song, but they don't know how to write it or how to read it. But by seeing single words and by doing some of these, um, let's say, well, by learning vocabulary, they can get back their own mother tongue. The same is true for many, many other parts in the world, obviously. So, uh, we have many Eastern European languages right now, because my colleague, the colleague of mine who's caring about it is Finnish, so she, she gave us the Finnish, Finnish uh, Urbic part. And this is one of the things we will show tomorrow during the translation marathon. Another, uh, other projects include games for kids, always primary school age just to learn uh, various tasks that can go from, well, from science to history, uh, playing hangman and knowing how to spell properly and so on. So all this together, there are many, many projects where one can cooperate. Okay, it's just, just to tell, it's not that uh, we don't have the students here who could help on that, really. So, uh, it's just to say that quite a lot of work is needed and if you have people who would like to come in and help there, of course we're happy about it. And tomorrow we will do some, yes? Um, you mentioned a really good point about kids learning better in their own language. Yeah. Um, I've seen some studies about that. Uh, what languages are you aiming at with Supra and what languages have you found? Okay. Uh, the first time I had this project in my hands was last year, then it wasn't really licensed. So we had long talks with the university, said, well, uh, if we want to have it out and want to have people use it freely, we must have a license, a uh, free license, so that they can reproduce, retranslate, and also change the contents and adapt it to the specific country. I mean, very often the, only the translation probably will not be enough. So. Uh, when they design a shadow of something, I mean, uh, if, if I take, I don't know, um, a tree, in another country, eventually they would take something else to, to show this shadow, so they change the picture or something like this. If you don't have the material and the free license, you cannot really do that easily, so you always have to check back with that. Uh, so we got this out on the free license some months ago and uh, the problem we are actually having is finding people who can translate from German to English, first of all, or from German to French. Uh, because the interest, let's say, people are more interested, for example, to translate a Wikipedia article from German to English or to French or to another language then translating educational material for primary school. Maybe you just need to put it in context. What it's, yeah. what the, what it's for, how it will do good. Yeah, well, um, I mean, to, to inspire it's, them it's, to, it's about, to do it. It's about, it's about context management in the end. But because if you uh, consider that we have three people working on that, yeah. and out of us three, uh, let's say one can really care about such things.